Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to do an example where we have first a capacitor that's fully charged with a battery that has potential V across the terminals. It adds charge to the capacitor, puts positive charge on one side, negative charge on the other side. Now we disconnect the capacitor. It is still fully charged with Q amount of charge on the capacitor. And now we place a dielectric inside the capacitor. We push a dielectric between the capacitor plates. It has dielectric constant K. How much force is that required? Well, actually, the answer will be surprising. The way to do that, of course, is to say, well, what is the original energy stored in the capacitor? The original energy stored would be one half Q initial times V initial. The energy final will, of course, be U final will be equal to one half Q final times V final. All right, now, wait a minute. Q initial and Q final, shouldn't that be the same Q? And the answer is yes, it should be because once the capacitor is disconnected from the battery, the charge has no place to go, so whatever you do to the capacitor, the charge must remain constant, which means that Q initial equals Q final, so we can say that U final, the final energy, is going to be one half Q initial times V final. So the question now is, how much does V final change? What was the initial V? and what will be the final V in relationship to the initial V. Well, remember that V is equal to the electric field between the plates times the distance between the plates, and we know that the electric field without the dielectric is equal to, um, let's see here, epsilon, no, not epsilon, so not, let me take that back. Uh, I'm taking shortcuts here, but again, let's take an infinite plate with charge on it. So the idea is, what is the electric field near an infinite plate like that? Remember, when we have a capacitor like this, the plates will appear to be infinite relative to the charge inside because the plates are so large compared to the separation distance between the plates. So the electric field, by definition, will be the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught, which is equal to the charge, the initial charge of the capacitor, divided by epsilon sub naught times the area of the plates. Now, if we put a dielectric in there, what would happen? With a dielectric in there that has dielectric constant K, the E final will be equal to uh, sigma final, that's the charge density, divided by K times epsilon sub naught, because now we have the dielectric in there. But since we didn't change the charge, because the capacitor was disconnected, it'll be Q initial divided by K epsilon sub naught times A. So the only difference between the electric field initially and finally is that we have this factor K in there from the dielectric constant, which means that uh, V final is equal to E initial times V divided by the dielectric constant. Notice that this here is the same as what we have over there, so the final V will be reduced by a factor of K. So that means the final V is reduced by a factor of K, so U final will be equal to 1 half Q initial times 1 over K times V initial, or U final is equal to 1 over K times uh, U initial. Let me write it like this. 1 half Q initial V initial, you can see that this of course is U initial, so it's 1 over K times U initial. So the energy, the stored energy in the capacitor, once we take the dielectric and push it in between the capacitor plates, is actually lowered. So we have a lower energy state. In other words, we don't even have to push the dielectric in there, it'll simply get pulled in on its own because we go from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. So, how do we find out by how much force the dielectric is being pulled into the dielectric? Well, we can say that the work put into the system is equal to the change in the internal energy or the change in the energy of the capacitor. In this case, the work done will be force times distance. So let me write it times like this. Is equal to the change in internal energy, which is U final minus U initial. Notice that U final is one over K times U initial. U initial is simply be, well, U initial. So what we get there is the force times the distance. Now imagine that the area of the capacitor plate is equal to L times L. That it's a square capacitor. The dimensions are L by L. So the distance traveled will be the, the length of the capacitor, which is equal to U final, which is one over K times U initial minus U initial, which would be 
uh, 1 over, oh, actually, would be equal to u initial times 1 over k minus 1. Notice that 1 over k is going to be a smaller number than 1 because that's a negative energy change, isn't it? It will require negative force, so to speak. It's getting pulled in. And so this would be equal to minus u initial times 1 minus 1 over k. So we're talking about a negative energy change. The energy is going down. And so therefore, finally, I'll take that result there. So we have FL is equal to minus u sub naught times 1 minus 1 over k. Or finally, the force by which the dielectric gets pulled in is equal to minus u sub naught over L times 1 minus 1 over k. So this is actually an interesting result. Once the capacitor is fully charged and we disconnect the capacitor from the battery, and then we try to put a dielectric in there, the dielectric doesn't need to be pushed in, it'll get pulled in because that will cause the capacitor to be in a lower energy state. Of course, that's a theoretical thing. You're going to have frictional forces and all that, so Purely theoretically, yes, the dielectric will get pulled in, but in practice, you may have to work it in because you're dealing with frictional force and all that that we've ignored in this particular case. It just seems interesting to realize that when you put a dielectric in a capacitor that's being detached from its voltage source, so it just has a charge on it, it will lower the energy of the capacitor, and therefore the dielectric will freely move into the um, space of the capacitor. That's how we do that.